Hello, hello, hello. What is going on? This is Youth Power Hour. Man, I'm excited to be here tonight, and I'm so happy you've chosen tonight to tune in to the Word of the Lord. Listen, my name is Emmanuel Adeye, all right, and just like any other Wednesday, like I said, I'm excited, and God is really doing marvelous things in each and every one of our lives. And listen, if it's your first time here, you are welcome. Go ahead, first time or not, drop your name in the comments and where you're watching. But if it is your first time, you can follow us on all our social media platforms. That's Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at AOCCNYC. And of course on YouTube at Abundant Life Christian Center or AOCC Winner's House. Which everyone you look up will give you our page. Listen, God is truly doing doing awesome things uh, here at AOCC. And this is a commission that you want to get in contact with, that you want to connect with. And you want to be a partaker of the grace that's on this house. I cannot stress that enough. So please pay attention to that and connect with us as soon and as much as possible. I'm so happy to be with you here today. Um, We're going to get into this message. We just ended our series on the time is now. uh, And and in that we understood that the time is now for us to transition into on-site services starting December 5th of this year, we will be returning on site to have our on site young adult services. That'll be from ages 16 to 30 at Winner's House in Brooklyn on 1230 on Sunday. So please get ready for that. Spread the word about that as we look to give God glory at a greater scale, at a greater way, and in person to worship together, to fellowship together, and to do so much more. So I want to get into the word for today. Um, I want to really come in here and talk about three kind of distinct different concepts with you. But as I was preparing, you know, the Holy Spirit kind of slowed me down and, and wanted me to kind of extend it and milk it and give you these things in three different weeks. So we have another series for you starting today, and it's called This or That. This or That. Plain and simple, this or that. All right. And the word for today, the message time today is called Sin No More. So we're going to get right into it. All right, we're here for a good time, not a long time. Truly want to just teach you some things today and let you go on your merry way. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for who you are. We thank you for your power and your might. God, we thank you because you're awesome, Lord. Because your grace is all we need. We thank you, God, because you love us, because you're looking to us, because you strengthen us, God, and because you guide us. Lord, we just worship you. We give you all the honor and the glory in our lives. Father God, continue, God, to lead us in the name of Jesus. We pray tonight as we open up your word, Father, that we take a step closer to you, a step closer in faith that our spirit is stirred up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord. Have your way tonight, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. And because you believe it, go ahead and put amen in the comments as well. Before I get into anything, uh, go ahead and like this video and share it as well. Let someone else be blessed by the word of the Lord that's on this platform. Uh, And truly, I want you to take notes and I want you to just focus and really connect with this message because uh, as as simple as as it is, as this teaching is, it is very paramount and it's very important. Uh, The title of this is called Sin No More. And today, I really want to talk to you about condemnation. Condemnation and conviction. Those two things, uh, as the polar opposites are, they are uh, that they are, are, are very important to our walk in life and, and our walk in this Christian faith. Generally speaking, we hear three voices. We hear the voice of Satan, we hear the voice of the Spirit, and we hear the secular voice. Now, those are just three names uh, people call different things. You hear the voice of the devil, the voice of God, you hear your own voice, the voice of the flesh. But generally speaking, it's in three categories. The voice of the spirit, the voice of the secular, where your own flesh will be, and the voice of the satanic. We hear those three voices in our head, and those voices will either condemn us or convict us. Those voices will either condemn you or they will convict you, and what you're hearing will be a clear indication of what you're receiving. Uh, uh, what you're hearing will be a clear indication of, of who you're receiving from, of, of where this message is coming from, if it's a message of conviction or if it's a message of condemnation. And for a lot of people, uh, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference between condemnation and conviction. So that's why it's important that we even get into that today and get into that topic. So let me just go ahead and de- uh, define condemnation for you. As written online, condemnation is this. It's an expression of strong disapproval. 
Very simple, very plain. It's an expression of strong disapproval. Now, my own definition, nothing crazy, no, nothing too, 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 uh, too broad, is simply condemnation is hate speech essentially to, to oneself. Hate speech to oneself or to someone else, honestly. And it feels like that. That's why I like to coin it that way. Condemnation is hate speech. Condemnation looks to bind you up it looks to bind you and connect you with your past. It looks to bind you and connect you to your mistakes. It looks to bind you and connect you to your flaws. It causes stagnation. It causes regression. It causes lack. Heck, it causes depression. It causes, it causes pain. Condemnation is not what you want. At the same con time, condemnation is also not what you need. It's, it's the simple goal of condemnation is this. The goal of condemnation is to not allow you to see yourself the way God sees you. Let that sit there for a second. The goal of condemnation is to not let you see the way God sees you. It's to let you see your, yourself through the lens of your past, through the lens of your mistakes, of your flaws, and in a way that you don't even want to see yourself, but quite frankly, a lot of us still do, depending on what the situation is. I mean, how many of us have been condemned recently? Condemnation comes in whether you sin or not, whether you're disobedient or not. Uh, uh, and, and, and truly, it, it's something that, that the enemy uses, that the devil uses, that heck, sometimes we even use ourselves, that, that, that really destroys us in many different ways. And I need you to understand this. God does not see you through the lens of condemnation. God does not see you through the lens of condemnation. I'll say it for the third time for someone who needs to hear it. God does not see you through the lens of condemnation. A very famous verse that we're going to look at right now, very simply, is Romans 8 verse 1. And it says this, So there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. And I'm amplifying my voice so this can stick with somebody. I'm amplifying my voice so this can shake off whatever weight of condemnation is on you. There is no condemnation for those who belong to Jesus Christ. This verse alone, we can legitimately end right here. <laughs> this verse alone is power. This verse alone is liberation. This verse alone is, is, is freedom. It's, it's, it's a new life. If you believe in this verse, you understand that they, there's no condemnation on your life. You can give God a shout of praise where you're at. You can clap your hands and scream a thank you to Jesus. You can praise and worship where you're at right now because there's no condemnation for who you are, for what you've done, for the person you are today. Because you are in Christ Jesus, there's no condemnation for you. For the moments of disobedience, for the moments of sin, there is no condemnation in Christ. This verse is power. Like I can repeat this verse for the next 20 minutes and then just pray and close this out and, and, and let the revelation of what this verse means just really marinate in your spirit. This is, it should wake you up. It should give you life. It lets you know that the burden that condemnation puts on you is not for you. It lets you know that I am anew in Christ Jesus. And because I am made new in Christ, there is no condemnation for what I did yesterday. There's no condemnation for what I did today. And heck, as we talked about earlier this year, so people who really understand the word of God understand that there's no condemnation for what I even do tomorrow. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. But you know what the problem is? We still feel it. We, a lot of times, some people daily, some people right now, still feel condemnation. As we talked about earlier, the three voices where it comes from. One, condemnation comes from Satan. That is obvious. That's a given. Satan does not want you knowing who you are. Satan does not want you identifying, in, uh, identifying yourself in Christ. Satan does not want you to have the best for yourself. So, of course, he will look to condemn you. But please, take this very important note down. Don't condemn yourself. Do not condemn yourself. How many people here, by show of hands, by show of comments, however it may be, how many of us, you know, how many of you suffer from your own self-condemnation? Self-condemnation is huge. Self-condemnation, honestly, you know, 
I would go out on a limb and say people self -con self condemn themselves more than Satan condemns them. To be very honest. Self-condemnation is easy. It's almost muscle memory for, for a lot of people. The problem with self-condemnation is it, it destroys your self-esteem. It destroys your hope. It destroys your work ethic. It, it destroys your belief in yourself and, and belief of what God says about you. It destroys your willpower. Heck, it destroys the positive things that you hear about yourself from other people. Self-condemnation is a major killer. And the Bible tells us that, yes, we self-condemn ourselves. I feel like somebody is saying, well, I will never, ever condemn myself. Well, let me tell you how the scripture says it. 1 John 3.20 says this in the, uh, um, in the New King James Version. 1 John 3.20 and 21. It says, for our heart condemns us. Boom. Done. Condemnation comes from within. Never comes from Christ, never comes from God. The Holy Spirit will never condemn you. We know condemnation comes from Satan, comes from two places. It comes from Satan, and it comes from our very own hearts. For our heart condemns us. God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. This is such a powerful two verses. I'm, it's going to stay in the screen as, as we break it down right here. One, I want you to see three things from this. One, for if our heart condemns us, that tells us straight up, okay, like we just said, condemnation comes from your heart. So please, I am begging you above, um, I'm about to say above all things, above many things, do not condemn yourself. Do your best. Try your hardest not to condemn yourself. It, it, it is very important to understand that. I, and, and, and the reason why it's good to identify that condemnation comes with these two places, not from God, because like I said, it doesn't come from God, but we still feel it. And there are many times where we feel condemnation and we just let it fester. We let it grow. We let it build. We let it, we let it weigh us down. But we need to learn to attack it. And when we know it comes from two places, we get to attack those places head on. So when it comes from Satan, we deal with that. But when it comes from yourself, you need to be able to deal with that even faster. Deal with that even quicker. Be, be ready to fight that. Be ready to speak a life into your own situation. Be ready to speak a life into yourself. Be ready to preach the gospel to yourself within because condemnation comes from your heart. Now, point two is this. As it says here, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. That's very, very important. God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Well, he is the all-knowing God and he know, and if he's greater than our heart and knows everything, then he must know something that's greater than the condemnation that you're feeling. He must know someone. He must know something about you, uh, about the person he's made you to be, about the power he's placed inside of you that puts you greater than the condemnation you're feeling. The all-knowing God knows all and still chooses not to condemn you. You want to know why? Because it's condemnation. Whatever, whatever it is that's, that's linking you to condemnation is not the greatest thing that identifies who you are. It's not the second greatest thing that identifies who you are. It's not the third greatest thing that, that identifies who you are. And the all-knowing God knows that. So he doesn't see you from the angle, from the lens of whatever it is that's causing any type of condemnation because you are greater than that. Heck, he is greater than that and he understands that that is not who you are. And look at that verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. If our heart does not condemn us, we can have this confidence towards God. So it's saying without condemnation, there's a great level of confidence that you can have within yourself about yourself, to yourself. If our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. That means this level of confidence that you can put in yourself, you can bring towards the presence of the Father. So, so, so when you come into the presence of God, you don't come in shame, you don't come in guilt, you don't come in condemnation, you come in power. You come in confidence. You come in, in strength. You come knowing exactly who you are. See, the problem with condemnation is condemnation messes up your identity. If, if, it's, if, it, if it can attack your confidence, then it's definitely a straight-on, brutal attack to your identity. 
your, your, your confidence, the way you carry yourself, the way you see yourself speaks a lot about your identity. And what condemnation does, it messes with that. It, it, it makes you see it from a different view. It doesn't give you a clear picture of who you are. And like this scripture says, uh, we build our confidence. We have confidence towards God. It is power. Like, you know, it's, it's, it's the liberation of that Romans 8 verse 1 again. It, it, it is that liberation where you don't have to feel like you, you don't belong in his presence. You don't have to feel like there's something holding you back from God. No, you can come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain uh, mercy, to obtain grace. When you know who you are, when you are confident in your identity in Christ, don't let it stop you from knowing the real you. Do not let condemnation stop you from knowing the real you. I feel like that is so important. Condemnation will tell you so many different things about yourself that you would not know exactly who you are. Condemnation will, will give you a label, will give you a name, will give you a title that is your sin. It'll give you a label, will give you a name, uh, and give you a title that is your past. When your identity should be rooted in Christ, your identity should be rooted in that Romans 8 verse 1, where there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because that's exactly where your identity is. Your identity does, does not uh, uh, reside in the porn you watch. It does not reside in the anger you had. It does not reside in the mistakes you made, in the things you stole, in the things you said. That is not where your identity resides. Your identity is rooted in Christ. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And when you believe that, you can say it with so much power and you can say it with so much more authority as you speak to your own life, as you speak to your situation, as you speak to the voice of flesh or the voice of Satan that's trying to tell you otherwise. Listen, and one of the biggest things about that is is when, when, when Satan tries to condemn you, when you try to condemn yourself, speaking lies, speaking the words that, the speak, speaking scripture over yourself, speaking the gospel as I alluded to earlier, that is going to spring you forth into action. That's going to spring you forth into, 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 uh, into life. That's going to give you a clear view of your identity. I'm going to go into that a little bit later. So, so take this note down. God does not condemn you, but he convicts you. Very simply, very plain, God does not condemn you, but he convicts you. And there's a big difference between condemnation and conviction. Uh, condemnation and conviction. Condemnation weighs you down. Conviction will lift you up. Condemnation will lead you to despair. Conviction will lead you to life. Condemnation uh, ends in sorrow. Con conviction pretty much it ends in joy. Condemnation makes you think that you can't change. Conviction, conviction gives you a way to change. Condemnation brings on heavy weights, brings on burdens onto your life. Conviction is a blessing. It's, it's a blessing that, that gives you clarity. Condemnation, condemnation makes you focus on your sin, and conviction wants you to focus on Him. It focuses your eyes on Jesus Christ. It focuses your eyes on what God has done for you. It focuses your eyes on the right and proper thing, which is righteousness. It focuses your eyes on the righteousness of God. Look at the scripture here. John 16, verse uh, 8 to 10 says this. It says, and when he comes, this is the Holy Spirit, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Look at this right here. Let me break, let me break this down a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> it says here uh, uh, that, that he will convict the world of its sin. What, what that is talking about there is the conviction that you get as a non-believer to a believer. That conviction that lets you know, man, I am a sinner. I am a sinner without Jesus Christ. That conviction that lets you know that, man, I need to give my life to Christ. That right there, uh, uh, to give a quick aside, is pretty much letting you know that even without having Jesus Christ inside of you, you can hear the voice of God. 
I'm not sure who that's for. You can still hear the voice of God, though you have not given your life to Christ, because the voice of God leads you to Christ. There's another scripture later on in the New Testament that, that spells this out again, that it is without, without the power of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be drawn to Christ as an unbeliever. So boom, when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin from sinners to believers. Then it talks about God's righteousness. And of God's righteousness, and of God's righteousness, and in verse 10, it says, righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. That is talking about the conviction that comes upon the believers. He convicts us of our righteousness. He convicts us of God's righteousness, reminding you of who you are, reminding you of that Romans 8.1 that, uh, that you are rooted in Christ, reminding you of what Christ has done for you on the cross. That is huge. See, see, the Holy Spirit convicts us of righteousness because we are so convinced that we are not righteous. For a lot of people, they're so convinced that they are not righteous. So the Holy Spirit comes and says, hey, listen, you are righteous. This, this, this is very important. You are righteous. The Holy Spirit needs to come in for many people and remind them and convict them and, and pick their head up and let them understand that you are righteous. Not by what you have done, but by the power of the cross. So take this point down. We don't work for righteousness. We work out our righteousness. We don't work for righteousness. We work out our righteousness. This is such a big point. Why? Because condemnation will lead you to believe that you need to do something to regain some type of status. Condemnation will lead you to believe that because you've done something, you are now belittled in some sense. No, it is not by works at all. It is by faith. It is not by works at all. It is all by faith. Why is this so huge? This is, this is so big because condemnation looks to highlight your sin and hide grace. The, the one, one of the main goals, one, one of the main thing condemnation wants to do is to highlight your sin, is, is to elevate your sin, is to make your, to enlarge your sin and minimize the image of grace. Minimize the image of Jesus Christ. Minimize what grace is doing and how grace is working in your life. When truly, we are all identified by grace. Amen. We are all identified by grace. You need to believe that. You need to understand that. You need to be empowered by that simple statement that we are all identified by His grace and through faith. You aren't identified by any label. You aren't identified by even the name sinner. You aren't identified, heck, by your skin color. You aren't identified by the place you live, by your last name, by what you did yesterday, by what you did this morning, by what you did before you clicked on this link. You are identified by the grace of God. You are not your sin. You are alive in Him. That, that, that's a revelation that we spoke about earlier. I believe that was in April and May. You, and that was in our, uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, that was in our Sustaining Faith series that we did. Uh, I think that's even part five. You are alive in Him. You are not your sin. You are identified by the grace of God. And that is liberation. That is freedom to those who need it. That is understanding and revelation to all. I understand that, that, that it doesn't matter where I come from, how I look, uh, um, what my skin tone is, my last name, the things I've done. I'm not identified by my works, by faith. I'm identified by the grace of God and His righteousness. We put on His righteousness. When we talk about the armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, we put on His righteousness. We put on his, his purity. We put on the image of Christ. We put on cleansiness. So that is so important. You can't let condemnation let you believe that you have to work for it. You just have to believe. You don't have to work for it. It's something that you believe by faith. It is grace that supersedes sin. That's why it's so important for you to understand that you are not just sin. That you are alive in him because his grace supersedes sin. Look at this verse right here. Romans 5 verse 20 to 21 says this. 
God's law was given so that people could see how sinful they are. But as people sinned more and more, as people sinned more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. I want to stop right there. God's law was given so that people can see how sinful they are. One big thing about condemnation is this. Condemnation will never tell you the full story. Condemnation will, will never tell you the full story. Condemnation will stop the story right at the law. So God's law was given so that people can see how sinful they are. True, correct, great. But that's where condemnation, condemnation likes to stop and say, hey, listen, you see how sinful you are? You, you, you see how dirty you are? You see how much you just can't make it? How much you literally, as much as you want to try to stop, you see how much you can't stop? It's just who you are. That's what condemnation would do. They try to show you the rule books, show you law, and label you and place you there. But... As people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over people, over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead, giving us right standing with God and resulting in eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Giving us right standing with God. Not having to work for this for our righteousness, but working out our righteousness our entire time here on earth, giving us eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This scripture tells me that there is not a single scenario. Listen, this I feel this strongly for somebody listening, watching right now. Listen, there's not a single scenario in your life that you've already been through or you can hypothetically make up right now in your mind where grace does not abound. There's not a single scenario in your life that you can make up in your mind right now that you can have done in your entire life where God's grace does not supersede your sin. There's not a single angle, not a single calculation, not a single action where His grace does not supersede sin. So there's not a single thought, there's not a single moment in your life where condemnation should and can rule in your mind over the conviction of God and over what God says about you. That's why it's so important to understand the difference between the condemnation and conviction. God will never condemn you, but He will convict you. But He will present the facts. He will tell you the truth. He, he, he will show you your sins, but then show you the grace at the same time. He will let you see where you slipped, where you messed up, and present grace to you at the the same time. Write this point down. Conviction is not an easy way out. It's an eternal way above. Conviction is not an easy way out. It's an eternal way above. Like I was saying, conviction, it doesn't excuse you from the consequences of your sin. We talked about that earlier this year. What a powerful year as, as we've been just going with the revelation of the Holy Spirit. We talked about that earlier this year in, in the book of 2 uh, Samuel chapter 12 with David and everything he did that led up to the consequences of his sin and how grace even stepped in in the perfect picture of what happens when you sin, when there's forgiveness, there's mercy, and there's grace there as well. We talked about that. Condemnation, all right, I'm sorry, not condemnation. Conviction does not excuse the sin you did. There are consequences for them. But it's also not just an easy way out. It's an eternal way above. It's a way to, to step over. It's a way to get past it. It's a way to rise above your sin. Rise above your sin with conviction, with grace. Rise above it with the power of the cross, with the power of Jesus Christ, and with the power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you. The power of the Holy Spirit is all you need to rise above condemnation. The Holy Spirit points to Jesus Christ, and He is the person of grace. And when we look to Jesus, when we focus on Him and not focus on our sin, we strip off every weight, we strip off every mentality, we strip off any piece of condemnation that's been weighing us down, that's been bearing us down, and we embrace His grace, we embrace His yoke, that's easy and light. That is exactly what happens. That is exactly how we can differentiate between condemnation and conviction. And, and, and there's 
so many stories in the New Testament with Jesus Christ where you can see this uh, laid out just beautifully. But I want us to, to quickly, as we're ending, to look at this one here. It's in John chapter 8, uh, verse 4 to 11, and it's when the, the Pharisees brought, they tried, they, tried to, they tried to test Jesus. They tried to put Jesus in a hard situation. Uh, uh, and, and they brought this promiscuous woman to him, and they said this. This is John chapter 8, verse 4 to 11. It says this. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses says to stone her. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something that they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote into the dust with his fingers. They kept demanding an answer, so he stood up again and said, All right. But let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. Throw the first stone. And he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this, they slipped away one by one, beginning from the oldest until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with, with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, look, look how beautiful this is. Jesus stood up again and said to the woman, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? No, Lord, she said. And Jesus said, neither do I go and sin no more. Can you see this beautiful picture here? Painted of those who are bringing the voice of condemnation. Those who are the accusers. Those, those, those who want to, uh, just, as how, thank you, just as how Satan comes to, 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 to be the accuser of the brethren. We see that in Revelation, how he comes to be the accuser of the brethren. The exact same way that these guys came and brought her to Jesus saying, hey, listen, she's done this, that, and the third. What do you say about this? And Jesus says, hey, listen, if, if you guys want to stone her, do you who have not sinned cast the first stone. And from the oldest, because the longer you live, the more you sin, that's just the truth about it. The oldest to the youngest, they all went away one by one. And Jesus was left. And he says, hey, does not one of them condemn you? No. So go and sin no more. It is her meeting with Jesus that enabled her straight from the mouth of a God, straight from grace himself, to go and sin no more. He didn't deny what she did. It was addressed. It was stated, it was known, it was presented, but grace not only gives you a way out, but it gives you an eternal way above, to step above, to rise above, to step over your sin and go and sin no more. And that's why it's the title of this message, because for everyone watching today, I don't care, I don't care what you've done. I don't care what you think about yourself. I want you to believe what God is saying about you. I want you to go, get up, and sin no more. To shake off the condemnation that's been weighing you down. To shake off the condemnation that's been holding you back. To shake off the condemnation that's been on you like handcuffs. Break out of it. Embrace the grace of God. Embrace His righteousness. Work out the righteousness that God has given you. And go, get up, and sin no more. And one of the best ways to even do that is to just speak life like I alluded to. Because it's Satan that's going to condemn you. And it's your heart that's going to condemn you. So you need to speak the word of God over your life. Speak that Romans 8 verse 1 and say, hey, listen, therefore, look in the mirror if you have to. Therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ. And it's even that same power of the Holy Spirit. The same power of God that enables you and strengthens you not to sin. That's in Titus chapter 2. I believe that's verse 12. It's, it's, the grace is not given just so you can sin, just because we know it supersedes and abounds over sin. No, it's that same power, it's that same grace that gives you a firm no to the things of the flesh. It gives you a firm no to the things of Satan. It gives you a firm no to, to the things of sin and disobedience. So walk in that power. And when Satan tries to remind you of your past, you got to remind him of his future. As we saw in that verse, it says, Holy Spirit convicts of judgment. And the book of Revelation talks about Satan and his future in the lake of fire and his future in hell. So anytime Satan tries to remind you of your past, it's like, hey, you know what, Satan? Thank you. I appreciate you telling me about that. Let me tell you what you have coming in store. I may have did those things. I may have said those things. I may have been to those places. But guess what? Where you're going, far more worse. Who I am now, different person. 
Where I'm going, complete different story. So when he tries to remind you of your past, you do him the job, you do him the favor, and remind him of his future. And you don't have to worry about working for this righteousness, but work out the righteousness of God and get up, stand up, and sin no more. That is a message for you today. That, that, that is something you need to understand. Condemnation will present you with facts. That, that, that's what's so crazy about that story. Condemnation will present you with facts. Con and, and there's a big difference between facts and truth. Facts and truth can exist, and, and there's one greater than both. Facts happen. We don't deny facts. We see the facts. Condemnation will tell you the facts. You did this. You said this. You went there. You stole that. You, you did that, and you became this. This is exactly what you used to do the other day. Those are all facts, condemnation. <laughs> Congratulations. Now, let me tell you the truth. Jesus is the truth. And what Jesus says about me, what Jesus says about you, what he says about your situation and who you are is that there is no longer any condemnation in him. You are loved by him. You are embraced by him, and his grace supersedes any sin. So I'm not going to come ever and preach to you from the angle of any ministry of condemnation. Why? When the grace of God speaks volumes, when the grace of God is what we identify ourselves to with, when the grace of God gives us the power to sin no more. And Father, I pray for everyone who is watching today, everyone who's under the sound of my voice, God, that we can move in power. We can move in your name. We can simply understand and embrace every single thing you say about us. Father, I pray for whoever is struggling with condemnation right now. Condemnation coming from, coming from Satan. We cancel his plans in the name of Jesus. We silence the voice of Satan in their lives in Jesus' mighty name, God. I pray for those even dealing with condemnation from their own heart, Lord. God, strengthen their heart. Strengthen their heart. Strengthen their mind in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I pray that we begin to see ourselves the way you see us, God, thank you for your love. It is your love, God, that's above all. It's your love, God, that cancels out all fear, all shame, all guilt. God, right now we speak in the name of Jesus. Any spirit that's holding people back, any spirit, God, that's causing stagnation, that's causing depression to be broken off in the name of Jesus, Father God, we loose your peace, we loose your power, we loose your presence over your people in the name of Jesus Christ. From today, Father God, they will not embrace the condemnation. From today, Father God, they will not hold on to condemnation nation, but we shall work out our righteousness. We shall work out our grace, God. We shall work out and listen and even obey the convictions and the leadings of the Holy Spirit. Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that we begin to speak life over ourselves, speak life over our situation, speak life anywhere the Satan is trying to speak condemnation or speak darkness to us in the name of Jesus. I pray that we forever know our power, forever know and forever come boldly to your, grace, to, to your throne, Father. God in confidence, in confidence of how you made us, in confidence of who we are, and confidence in our identity in you. Because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, if you've even been watching today, you've been condemned for most of your life, but today you've been convicted. As that scripture said, the Holy Spirit convicts us from uh, convicts those in the world of their sin and maybe today you've been convicted of your sin it's, it's time now to give your life to Jesus Christ and sin no more it's time now to give your life to Jesus Christ and not be burdened by the weight of condemnation and what the world says and what Satan says so I want you to join me in this prayer right now repeat after me dear, dear Holy Spirit dear Father dear Jesus I am a sinner and I thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for me on the cross. Today, I accept Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Come into my heart and change my life forever. Fill me with your spirit, fill me with your joy, and fill me with your power. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, somebody. Can you give a shout of praise to Jesus Christ in this moment? Come on, somebody. 
God is good all the time. Have you been blessed by today's message? Listen, if you just prayed that prayer just now, congratulations and welcome into the kingdom of God. I want you to text SAVED. Text SAVED from your phone. That's S-A-V-E-D to 718-312-2253. I'll say it again. That's text SAVED, S-A-V-E-D to 718-312-2253. By three. Listen, we will reach out to you. We want to connect with you. We want to bless you, pray for you, and just release more power, more grace into your life in Jesus' name. Go ahead and like this video and share this link. Let others be blessed by the word of the Lord on this platform. This or that, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose condemnation? Are you going to choose to listen to condemnation? Are you going to choose to listen to the convictions of the Holy Spirit and understand who you are in Christ. I want to just make a couple of announcements. As I said earlier, we are starting our young adult service December 5th. Come on, somebody. That's going to be at 1230. That's a Sunday. Yes, today's a Wednesday, but that's a Sunday. And it's going to be Sundays from now on. Uh, That's age 16 to 30. Do not worry if you are not in that age range. We have not forgot about you. We will never forget about you. We still have things uh, coming for you. Heck, we still have this Wednesday platform, so, so please still pay attention to, to everything that we have coming forth. And of course, we have our youth slash young adult takeover services, all right? There's going to be two services before this year is over. The first one will be November 21st. That's a Sunday. That's the Sunday of the return of the Women's Retreat, where we have our first takeover service, and December 12th. So please be ready for that. Those weekends, both Friday service and Sunday service, will be taking over the majority and the major aspects of, ser- of the service. All right, so that's all of Friday and Sunday services. So please, if you haven't already, a lot of you have, and we're so grateful, so thankful. Uh, but if you haven't already, reach out to any of the youth leaders about serving that weekend. All right, be ready for all the great things coming on the ALCC platform. God bless you. And hey, listen. Go in power, sin no more, and let the power of the Holy Spirit be the thing that identifies you today. And remember, it is your story for His glory. Mm